Welcome to the GCN Tech Show and welcome to the weekend. God, it feels weird being here on a Saturday. Why are we here on a Saturday? Um, just for fun, mix it up, make it spicy. Anyway, this week's jam-packed with loads of fancy new bikes, some bling wheels, super fast tubeless valves and the world's first gravel bike. And this week we're going to be discussing some of the most beautiful custom painted bikes and whether, well, we'd really want to own one or not. Hmm. First up, let's take a look at last week's pub. You haven't been here for a few weeks, have I've you? I've been out on, I've been traveling. You have been traveling, a little a bit lot. out of the loop of the polls. So mm. last week we asked, what do you use your bike mostly for? Options being commuting, racing, keeping healthy and fun. And it turns out 57% of the audience votes for keeping healthy. Very yeah. good. Glad to keep the, everyone so healthy. 25% um, for fun, 11% for commuting and just 7% for racing. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. But on to our main talking point for this week, because we're going to be discussing some of the most beautiful custom-made bikes that we've ever seen, starting with the specialised Athos from Japanese artist Kosuke Masuda. And this is an incredible bike, painted by himself, and has been photographed by his wife, Kei Hompo. Yeah, it's off the charts. This is, I think this is the most beautiful bike I've ever seen. Um, let us know what your thoughts are. But he's taken something well, a 12 grand bike already to specialised Athos, and then arguably turned it into something priceless. Yeah, the intricacy and detail on the textured finish of the bike is incredibly unique and incredible to see. And, and hidden amongst the detail within the paintwork are little figures such as what's on the stem. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, but it's not just the sort of custom paint on the frame. If you look at the chain set, he's taken sort of his engraving tool, which is kind of like a, from what I can tell, like a posh Dremel multi, and created these incredibly detailed and intricate sort of flowing patterns all over the chain set and the other alloy components too. So it's not even on just on the chain set. If you look on the brake calipers and the rotors. Oh yeah, the disc rotors. It just blows my mind, it's stunning. Well, the, the intricacy on the disc rotors is on the cooling fins, it's not on the actual braking surface. Well, but, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's amazing to see, and I, God knows how long it would have taken to cover all of those little individual lines and scribe marks that they've done. It's so unique. Yeah, it? I mean, I've not seen anything like this on a bike ever before, but I think mean, it's really cool. He's, he's clearly an artist, yeah. and you know, instead of using a, a canvas or a vase, these, if you're if you're watching in America, um, he's used a bike. Yeah, and so the thing that impresses me most about this is it's not painted in the traditional method that people use to paint frames, is it? So this is done all by hand. Some of the process of doing with, it, I've with seen... With a brush. Yeah, with a brush, like flicking um, little pigments of paint onto the frame that creates that really unique finish, doesn't it? This has really nice texture, yeah. texture to it. Nice. It's beautiful. Do you know what? I'm going to fire us in with a pole, though. A pole this early? Oh, yeah. I'm going oh. rogue. Because yeah. I want to know, does the audience, right, think that if they had a bike that was this beautiful, this intricate, this precious, yeah. would you actually ride it? Or would you just keep it on your wall as a piece of art? Should bikes be ridden? Just let us know, vote in the poll. Because, um, I mean, do you know, part of me thinks if I had a bike that was that beautiful, it just stressed me out. Well, I think... I'd be, I'd be worried every time I propped it up at the calf or any time I went down a road and there was a bit of grit fl flipping up onto the paintwork, yeah. it, I'd just be... It just stressed me out. It would stress me out, but I am also of the mindset that a bike is there to be ridden, regardless of how nice it is. Um, All right. Well, it's not down to us, but I'm intrigued to see what everyone has to say about this next week. But anyway, on the subject of this, we've actually picked out another few bike designs which caught our eye, such as the folding feather bike, which you took a closer look at, from the Bespoke Show in Harrogate. And it's yeah. finished in this really cool um, candy red, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. And that was done by hand as well, but it's a bit more practical because it's got this full lacquer finish over the top, so it's designed to be used. But that kind of like organic flowing candy red underneath it, it I mean it looks like lava it's beautiful was it hot was it <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the worst joke I've ever made that is it terrible um also we can't talk about custom paint without mentioning Dr Bobby formerly of Colourburn Studio who we visited a few years ago he's done some exquisite paint jobs the one that stands out for me though was actually his own bike which is a Genesis Filare which he custom painted with several coats of paint so they had this real depth this metallic dark blue 
just so much depth to the yeah. paint when you looked at it and saw it in person. But then underneath that, all the logos were done with this gold leaf that was oh, finished by hand. Yeah. And it, oh, absolutely incredible. But he did ride that bike sort of to and from work every day. <laughs> it's commuter. Yeah. Incidentally, God. he now works in-house doing custom paint jobs for Cannondale and their athletes. That is actually a cool fact. Um, another person we spoke to was Ali over at Fat Creations, renowned for their custom paintwork. And one of the bikes which they said stood out to them over the years of, they've been customizing bikes, was a Santa Cruz V10, I believe it was, which mm. they custom painted for Steve P. So their Santa Cruz V10 being crazy downhill bike. Not the sort of thing you and I would normally ride, is it? No, no. <laughs> but I can appreciate a beautiful paint job. So 160 hours of, of, of work. Yeah, yes. so 160 hours of work went into this and the reason behind it was because it was painstakingly painted in a tartan finish and funnily enough, tartan paint isn't a thing that invent is invented yet. No, to create that kind of tartan effect required hours and hours of, of masking of different yeah. layers of paint. So it was a completely different style of doing it to the intricate brushwork. But yeah, like so it had to be so precise to make it look right. I think that's a big thing with all of these custom bikes is yes, they take ages to paint, but also the preparation and planning that goes into them is far greater than your normal paint scheme, doesn't mm. it? Um, talking about tartan paint, it reminds me of when I was like an apprentice in the in GCN garage. Tech on your first day, when yeah. I asked you to go get tartan paint and yeah. you failed. Ollie's like, go get the tartan paint, go get um, go get a long weight, there's a guy down the road. Um, you'll get it. Still Blinker wait. fluid. Oh. Yeah. Another bike that has caught our eye is that used by Adam Blythe, retired pro rider and um, regularly found over on GCN Plus, GCN Racing, commentating on all of the good stuff. And he has a custom painted Genesis Velare, I think. No, it's not a Velare. Oh. But it's a Genesis. Oh, yeah. Genesis. But it's, it's custom painted in this kind of like cloud, like sky blue yeah. cloudscape kind of But thing. the big difference here to lots of the other custom painted bikes we're talking about is Adam actually rides it nearly all the time in lots of different weather conditions, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets, gets a lot of use for sure. That's actually a Fat Creations uh, painted bike as well. Oh. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I'm quite, I think it's good to see the bikes being used. Like, my, so my mindset is that if you've got a custom painted bike, use it. It's great to see Adam doing it. Well, let us know your thoughts. If you had a beautiful, beautiful bike, would it just stress you out and would you keep it on a wall as a piece of art? You know what to do? Fire it down in the comments, vote in the poll. I haven't got enough wall space to hang a bike. <laughs> Time now for Hot Tech. And first up this week, the Olympic mountain bike champion and all-round beast on a bike, Tom Pidcock, has been for a ride. Now, I posted this ride on Strava and alongside it, put up some photos of what appears to be a new, as of yet unreleased, Pinarello cyclocross bike. So the bike appears to be a brand new version of Pinarello's Crossista. We can tell this because we're so observant we saw Crossista written on the top tube. But in addition to that, some other cool details, such as the seat stays, they look just like the seat stays on the new Pinarello F. So that's slightly more aero design and the way that they join onto the, onto the seat tube it's just like a Pinarello F. But in addition to that, there's also a new profile to the top tube, presumably to help you remain comfortable when you're shouldering the bike, which is well, it's common practice in cyclocross, isn't it? And it's a similar process and a method of doing this to what we've seen with the Canyon in-flight. Yeah, so that's that sort of bit. ergonomic raised bump to just accommodate your shoulder and make that more comfortable yeah. when you're running around with your bike. As Tom will no doubt be doing as cross season is approaching. Now the bike has a custom paint job on it, which we think, well it has a, a nice paint job on it, yeah. which we think is customised for Tom rather than the new sort of leaked Ineos team colours for next year because it has red, white and blue on it, which, British yeah, he's the yeah. British uh, national champion cross. And then it's got some gold accents on it as well, which presumably is a nod to his status as Olympic mountain bike champion. I mean, come on, if, if I was Olympic champion, I'd want gold everything, wouldn't you? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Gold shoes, gold helmet. I would like play off that for quite a bit of time. Yeah. Um, mm, cool. Or bronze if you're Carapaz. Get a bronze bike. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so up next in Hot Tech, Orbea have launched the new Orbea Terra. So this is their gravel slash cyclocross bike. First launched back in 2017, this is a completely overhauled version and the designers and manufacturer Orbea said they started from scratch when designing this bike and as such, it is completely different to the previous version. We've got seven different versions available, three colours, two matte, one gloss, you know I mean? one by two by mechanical or electronic shifting. 
And also you can get it in the Albert Mayo Custom Creator. So let me give you some of the headline stats for the bike. We've got, I've, it's, are you pleased that I remember all this? Yeah, wow. Yeah, we've got clearance for 45 millimeter tires or 50 millimeter tires if you go for the 650B wheel set. We've got the option of one by two by, like I've said, so removable front derailleur mount, asymmetric um, chain stays to mean that we've got lots of tire clearance, but also make it compatible with up to a 34 tooth inner chain ring when you run it in two by setup. Um, locker, little storage device on the down tube. Is it? Like, yeah. it's like a little swap box thing? Yeah, so um, it's where the bottle cage is. Remove that and inside the frame are these little bags and you can store stuff in the entire length of the down tube. What did you store in there? Um, absolutely nothing. Although I did do a first look at the Orbea Terra, which we've got out on the channel, incidentally, a few days ago, and inside there was a spare inner tube. Some um, someone handily left in there. I'd probably store a banana in there, or like I don't know that you get I'd banana put, in there. I'd put some. I'd put a spring-loaded mechanism into the down tube, yeah. and then like Pringles, so that it just slowly pushes them up, and I just take, take them out. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I would mostly put ride snacks in there. Um, prices start at £2,899 or £3,199. If you want to see the Terra in more detail, Alex has done a first look video on it, so you can check that out. Next up, DT Swiss has got some new wheels out. These are called the ERC wheels uh, and they're designed for endurance riding. So think big epic days out in the saddle. Something like the Mallorca 312. Oh, speaking of which, we've got a video out tomorrow with you and former beginner Freddy, where we see him making his progress through the ranks and taking on the event. And then it's safe to say, well, he's not, not really a beginner anymore, is spoiler he? Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. We all know how good he is now. Yeah, well, yeah. He, yeah, he found it proper, proper tough. So make sure you check that video out. But yeah, he's, he's definitely graduated from beginner. He's um, graduated bike school. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyhow, these are the new DT Swiss ERC wheels, and I've actually done a first look video on them, so if you want to find out more detail, then by all means check that out. But I'm going to give you some quick headlines. Yeah. First thing is, do you remember back in the day, in the old olden days, the olden when days. aero wheels first came out and they were V-shaped, and everyone was like, ooh, they're great, but then they realised they were really twitchy in the I do, I do remember the olden days. Yes, yeah. Yeah. so back in the olden days. And then, then after that, people were like, oh, we'll make U-shaped rooms. V-shape is dead. Yeah, yeah. and everyone was like, oh, U-shape, great. Well now, U-shaped rims are dead because DT Swiss reckons that they have improved on U-shaped rims and made them even more aerodynamically stable and less twitchy by creating UV-shaped rims. UV-shaped, I didn't this see that real. coming. So it's, it's wide like a U and then it tapers off on this edge here and they have done a huge amount of aerodynamic work with Swiss side and have come up with this which is apparently just far more aerodynamically stable and I've done a video on it. There's loads of other details on them, including you know really fancy thin um, Aero Light 2 spokes. They're ridiculous, these things. Hidden nipples, loads of other Aero features, and the brilliant DT Swiss 240. Free up sound check this? it, go on. Quite quiet. Smooth, guys. 240 hub that, Alex. Anyway, check out the vid if it's your thing. Oh, it's two depths as well, so 35 mil, that was the one I had, and 45 mil. Oh, nice. Next up in hot tech, although maybe not quite hot tech, is over on GMBN Tech. Doddy has done a look at an old gravel or mountain bike, which is John Tomac's bike from back in the day, 1990, I believe. And yeah. it's a Yeti C26. C How do you remember it? Go watch Doddy's video, it's great. Uh, um, check it out. It's arguably, right? This is cool because it's arguably the first ever gravel bike. And the yeah. reason why it came about was because, well, John Tomac was competing in international, well, yeah, World Cup, Mountain Downhill Hill and mountain bike cross country races. Yeah. Uh, but he also rode on the road for the 7-Eleven team. He was a road cyclist, like a bit sort of like a Sagan or a Vanderpool or a Pidcock, yeah. you know, multidisciplinary, yeah. just super talented rider. And because he rode on the road, he wanted to keep his position like consistent. Replicate it, yeah. So he was consistently training in the same position with drop bars. So he put drop bars on his mountain bike. But it, so basically sort of created the world's first gravel bike. 1990, Check. the first gravel bike. It's well worth heading over to GMBN Tech and having a closer look at that bike. But it's super cool to see it with its rim brakes. It's got a rear disc wheel, hasn't it? Oh, it's there's, proper cool, there's yeah. There's loads of cool tech on this bike. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, incidentally, great year 1990, year I was born. Was it? Yeah. Up next, in hot tech, we've spotted a folding bike over on Kickstarter. Yeah, it's called, I mean, it's got folding wheels. I've not seen this before. It's called a F Tuck. And, well, the designers have got a patent pending 700C 
yeah. folding wheel design a folding with wheel. carbon fibre tubes instead of spokes and it all clips together and then each segment is branded by two spokes. They described it as like pizza slices that then... Yeah, okay, I've seen, I've seen a picture of this and it does look quite yeah. cool to have carbon tubes instead of spokes but I'm not too sold on the idea of breaking your wheel into three separate pieces With and then clipping them together. solid tyre segments. Yeah. I mean, the advantage obviously is that you get a folding bike with that larger wheel size, so hopefully you can travel a little bit further, a bit faster and similar to a normal bike. Yeah, so but a 700c wheel instead of like a little tiny Brompton wheel. Yeah, but what, what size was a Brompton? 16 inches? I think they are, they're quite small. Looks normal to me, yeah. <laughs> It's an interesting idea, this, and I guess the advantage is that you get those larger full-size 700c wheels, although maybe at the downside of, of speed, I suppose. Yeah, well, the lower rolling of solid tyres and segmented yeah. solid tyres. Yeah, but then you don't have to have little wheels like a Brompton. Do you know what? It's going to be interesting, seeing as this is on Kickstarter. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds. <laughs> oh, oh, God, you didn't do that. Right, final bit of hot tech this week, and we all know how much I love tubeless tyres, so I spotted these cool new valves from 76 Projects, which they say allow four times more air to get into your tyre. So by they like, what, like four times the diameter? No, no, they're pretty much the same size as a normal Presta valve, but they have tweaked and revised the valve design very slightly to allow more airflow to go through, and it also says is unlikely to get clogged so easily with tubeless sealant. That's good to know. It is good to know. They weigh nine grams, they're CNC machined, and I think they're available in a couple of different colors and lengths. Hmm. More hot tech next week. All right, it's now time for snacks of the week. We haven't done it for a few weeks, so no. it's good to ignite this part. It's it, right, we've got some snacks, right? But we've also got some things that aren't snacks. Starting with this, this is really cool. You go first. Check this out. This beautiful big box here. Shimano 100 Works, it says on it, and it is from a guy called Steve Crossley in Ontario, Canada. And he said, Ollie, this isn't snacks in case you were hoping, but having watched your video of the Tour de Station, I was delighted to see you drop, and he uses a not very nice word, I'm not going to read it out, that beep contador. Um, and he sent me this as a prize for doing that. Um, fantastic. Thank you so much, Steve. Really nice of you, Steve, to address that to both of us. Yeah. I'm really grateful. Look at this. Um, it's the Shimano Centenary Book. I'd seen this on the internet and secretly wanted one because it's beautiful. It's just full, filled with loads of beautiful photography of, of everything Shimano's created over, a over the last hundred years. Do you know including what? like hyperglide cassettes, my favourite. <laughs> I, I really want to play it cool and pretend that I'm not jealous, Look but I'm actually this. really, really jealous how of this. How beautiful is that? Um, well, I've got something else that was it's sent It's got in fishing for you. reels in it as well. So and fishing rods. Everyone seems to have sent stuff in for you. So this person sent something in that says, Dear Ollie, I saw you weigh the Orbea Aero, um, Orbea Orca Aero the other day, and some reps with these will reduce the shakes that you have when you hold a bike out in front of you. Start light, then heavy, and you'll be stout in no time. Safe travels, great respect and admiration from um, Big Stew. Thanks, Big Stew. Hmm. What's in there, then? I've, I don't actually know. I've not unboxed this yet, so I'm slightly concerned as to what we're going to find. Should we be doing this live on camera? Yeah, because we always record the tech show live. <laughs> oh. Oh, thanks, Big Stew. Well, it's not all. right. We also have actually got some snacks this week, which have been sent in from... Uh, Big, big time fan of the show, Sachin Katecha. Wasabi peas. Some wasabi flavoured peas. Oh, for no on. reason other than the fact that he knows that you can't deal with spice. I do dislike spicy stuff. Oh, just, oh thanks, yeah. I'm going to smash them all. Mm. I've got a few. What? Two. Smash them all. Mmm. More snacks next week. Mm. Alex is going to start sweating for the upgrades now. I'll be back in a minute, sweaty. Mm. <coughs> Not too bad. I'm <laughs> surviving. Right. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Just about all right. <sighs> oh, God, right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll survive. I'll just, I'll just have a drink, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> you breathe it in, it's Right, my mouth is no longer on fire. I've stopped sweating a little bit and it's time for screw riding upgrades, buy upgrades, where you submit upgrades of you made to your equipment and bikes for the chance to win the ultimate prize. And the ultimate prize is... A water bowl. A GCM water bowl, if you couldn't quite understand, Ollie. So um, I'll start us off with the results from last week. So yeah. last week's upgrade, oh, it was a, a three-way big hit, this was. Whoa. Yeah, I know, so we had John Michael Bike in two with his police style lights, Dazza underscore K567 with his giant TCR upgrade, and then we had Helmi Ouija with a homemade bike. And I can confirm the winner is Dazza underscore K567 taking 62% of the votes with their giant TCR upgrade. And um, get in contact over on Facebook and we'll get the water bottle sent out to you. This week, we've got Alex Tebe, 2005, who's got a 2005 Fuji Roubaix frame, which he got for free from a drunk yard. Good work. Yeah. Mm. Hope you didn't steal it. No. Um, he said it had a crack in it, but one of his friends was able to weld it and fix it. And then he had lots of parts at home, but then he also managed to find a few in junk yards. Hope you didn't steal them. No. Um, and he's done a couple of rides on it already. He says it rides really smooth. It is a little bit small for him, but um, yeah, so it's great. So there's the frame that he found in the junkyard. A little bit of rust on it. Look a bit got... worse for wear, isn't it? It is. The finished but article. Wow, look at that. Stripped of paint, redone graphics on it. I it's mean- It's got carbon um, seat stays on the rear triangle. Do you remember No, they're it... just painted that way, I think. Remember when that was oh, a thing? Oh, yes, maybe they are an insert type thing. It's a Roubaix frame, added compliance. Aero seat post, but that's so yeah, rapid. that is uh, that's a cracking job you've done there. That's abs that's great. I love that bare aluminium finish. Not enough bikes have bare aluminium finishes. Let it be said, I've said it. Right, who's it up against? <laughs> okay, right. I'm glad you got that out of your system. Mm. They're up against Kea Bengu with a bike, which they say they picked up an old giant bike with a bunch of rusted parts and worn down components, stripped it entirely and upgraded it along the way giving it a period correct Dior parts with a mix of race face and a one by narrow wide front chain ring. It's got a commuter rack, some slick cruiser bar, and also um, also a stem combo from Velo Orange, sorry. We laced up some chunky new tires. Great fun bike for transporting beers around to hang around with his mates. That, that bike looks amazing. Yeah. It looks amazing because they've had a terrible lockdown in Melbourne. So yes. that's great that yeah. you've now got, a, you've, you've been proactive during your lockdown. And uh, now you've got something to enjoy when it's over. Those Maxxis tires really do set it off. Big chunky boys. That is, that's a wicked looking bike. I love the, uh, the chain ring as well. Narrow wide. Really it's, smart. Yeah, I really like this. I like the fact that it's... Turbo saddle on there as well. Yeah. Very Italian. <laughs> I like the fact it's very in keeping with how the bike was originally made and it still looks cool with a retro sort of vibe to it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a cool bike. It's doing it for me. Um, don't let us sway your decision though. Head over to the GCN app, vote for which bike you like the best and we'll, um, well, we'll announce it next week. Two good ones. Two very good ones. Right, it's now time for the Bike Vault. This is the section of the show, which is not only our favourite, but it's where you upload pictures of your bikes to the GCN app, then Ollie and I judge them to be the nice or super nice. If they're super nice, well, I ring the bell. Yes. And they go into the Bike Vault forever. You can play along at home by voting on the GCN app with all the bikes featured. First up, the most super nice bike from last week. What was it? Um, unfortunately, I don't have that information to hand. Hmm. Right, okay then. Um, so, well, first up into the bike vault trying to get in this week is Darren Goh, who uh, has a Curve Belgi V3, and it's been photographed at the Jetty in Singapore. What do you make of this? Oh, I like this. Titanium. Um, Looks beautiful. Love titanium. the carbon fork. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, oh, we've he's got lined a four up the tyres. He's got, this is weird, controversial, SRAM four group set. Yeah. Shimano XT rotors. Oh, that is controversial. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay going with super that. nice. Yeah, I'm going super nice. Super yeah. nice. Look at, look at all the look at all the freight, the shipping freight. Yeah. In the background, I was a bit rusty ringing the bell there. Manon's rung it for a couple of weeks. So. Okay. Yeah. Who's up next? Uh, next one we've got Donegro, who says they well, they've got a Trek Madone SL6 from 2022. Oh my goodness, why on earth is it lent up like that? Jaunty angle, risk scratching the seat post there on that that huge 
pole. Yeah. Um, Cranks weird, not aligned. We oh, oh god, not Biggie Smalls. Just uh, what? Oh. Way, way, way too many emissions and errors with this yes. bike. Um, it's a nice for me. We're going to brush past it. Yeah. Next nice. up is Ben Jamon. Ben Jamon with his Orica Green Edge 2015 Team Issue frame, and he's done it as a lockdown build project. He's, he's banged some of the components on there. Oh, I like this. That is a very, very nice bike. Do you not think, um, so what year was that? 2015, do you not think this bike looks slightly dated now already? It does, but that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a classic. It's cool. It is a classic. It's a beautiful it's, bike. Just you think it's not that long ago, and I do like it. Those old Scott Addicts are some of the lightest sort of rim brake frames ever created. I'm a big fan of them. Big yeah, on the hill climb scene. I mean, he's done everything right. He's, he's I mean, he's, oh, it's a super nice. It's easy. super nice for me. making my life easy. Right, making life easy. Uh, next up, we have got a catchy name, a catchy username. N55GD7XZDM. Yeah, I think you, you nailed that one. Yeah, good a job. Lot of, a lot of droids watch this show. Yeah, this is a Rodeo Adventure Labs Trail Donkey, apparently, um, fitted with Campagnolo e car. E -car. Um, oh, I like this. It's like a real. Um, rowdy gravel bike, isn't it? Mm. We've got big, massive, chunky tyres, sort of a mountain bike style geometry. I think this is the tech show's first rodeo. <laughs> well, you, you weren't lying when you said you had more puns, were you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the bike. I'm not sure I'm particularly overly happy with the presentation nice. of it, so it's a nice, yes. Alarmed has submitted this. Oh, a Saracen hack. Not very often we see a Saracen in the bike, but is it a bit more of a mountain bike brand? Mm. Um, but I like like seeing this. Good to see a sort of more entry level spec road bike. Mm. That's someone who's um, who, who takes care of their bike. Yeah, they've, they've looked after it. It's their, clearly their pride and joy, and they've 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 you know tried to get it into the bike vault. Cable actuated disc brakes, so you know getting in the disc brake market. I'm intrigued by that rear cable and the way it goes around the rear stay. That's interesting. It is interesting. I quite like the sort of satiny grey gunmetal colour. Mm. Yeah, like that. I tell you what, I'm going to call this early. I'm going to go super nice. Hey. I quite like that. Oh, yeah, super nice. Yeah, super nice. Good job. Derek Shiki. Yep. Uh, what have we got? A seven mud honey. No, can't say I've ever heard of one of those. Wow. Just wow. So according to their description, they say bikes are cool, bikes are fun, and they're even better when they're covered in mud. I, I, I think gravel bikes are allowed to be covered in mud and dirt. That's yeah. one of the rules. One of the subclause rules that we have in the bike vault rules. I haven't actually checked that. Is that appendix? Those old retro that a, ace um, wheels? Appendix 4, section 7. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. yes. Are those old Jura ace wheels on there? V-shaped wheels. V not U-shaped wheels. Not, not V-U-shaped wheels, but yeah. V-shaped wheels. Um, I'm going to go... Whoa, look how flared the bars are. I'm going super nice, I'm whatever. Going su super nice, yeah. It's the weekend, go wild. Yeah. Live your life, live your life. Live it. Um, um, Hendrix Schillings, 94. Oh, what is Colnago this? Colnago V3 RS with rather beautiful Bora WTO wheels on there with Continental GP5000 tan wall tyres. Hold, hold, hold your horses a second. Is this the brand new Shimano Altegra? Is Wowzers. it? Wowzers. How has he got his hot? We haven't even got that. Hot diggity damn. <laughs> Who is this guy? Well, he's a magician. Um, well, I really like the bike. I like the fact it's slightly stealthy with that little bit of sort of orangey red on it. Oh, it's a super nice. It's a super nice to me. We're ending on a super nice. Uh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the show. We have, as always, the bike vault was incredible. Ended on a super nice, which is always a good thing to have. And um, remember to check out GCN Plus. We've got loads of cool documentaries coming up. Yeah, speaking of, of Bromptons, I do happen to know we've got a Brompton one coming up, which is really cool. I love Bromptons. I think they're brilliant engineering. It's a quirky British design. And, well, it's Saturday, so I guess we better go. Uh, we're going to Ikea. Yeah, flat pack furniture all round. That's what we do on Saturdays, isn't it? Yeah. Sundays, what are we doing on Sundays? Cycling, that was it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Bye.